Liar. You disgust me. Get out of my sight. I don't want to see your face anymore. Huh? What's this suddenly, Vivian? Did something happen? But today's a day to celebrate. Shut up, liar. Go home. Don't come to my wedding today. What? Hold on, Vivian. What do you mean, go home? But I just got here with James and his family. Did something happen? Don't act like you don't know, you fraud. You were lying this whole time, right? What are you talking about? Just calm down, will you? I won't be able to understand you if you don't tell me what's happened first, daughter. Stop pretending to be my father. You're not my actual father, right? I heard everything about it. Well, it's true that I'm only your stepfather, but what do you mean you heard everything about it? I know why you and Mom got married. You disgust me. To think that you were the kind of scum that would cheat. I don't want you to come to my wedding anymore. What? What do you mean, cheat? Me? I've never done such a thing in my life. Don't act dumb with me. You cheated with Mom, right? What? With Alexandra? What do you mean I cheated with my wife? While me and my brother were living with our real father, you stole our mom away from Dad. That's when our real parents got divorced and Mom got custody of us and then married you. Huh? What are you talking about? Just because our real dad got sick and couldn't work anymore, Mom threw him aside and went with you instead. You two never even paid him an alimony. Disgusting. Hold on. I have no idea what you're talking about. None of what you're saying is true. I said don't act dumb with me. I already heard everything. Who did you hear this from then? My real dad, of course. Huh? My dad, who I'm actually related to by blood. He visited me around two months ago. He said he was looking for us all this time because you and mom basically abducted us from him several years ago. It's a lie. Don't believe what he says. What he's saying is impossible. It's not a lie. Dad told me everything about it. And about how mom cheated on him with you and how you two abducted us from him and about how hard life was for him after that. He's been wanting to meet us all this time. To think that you hid all of this up until now and pretended to be our father. You're trash. Hold on, Vivian. Listen to what I have to say first. First of all, me and your mom didn't meet while she was married. We did nothing shameful like that. You're still going to make excuses? My real dad told me he's been keeping this quiet because he didn't want to hurt me. But he said he couldn't stand anyone like you ruining my wedding. He told me all this really kindly back there. All you think about is yourself, right? That's not true. Listen to me, please. I don't want to listen to a word you say. I'm going to invite my real dad to the wedding, not you. Just leave, will you? I don't want to call a woman that would cheat on my mother anymore. And you're not even related to me in the first place. Not once did I consider you my father. Oh, I see. Fine. I get it. I'll go home. I don't care what you call me anymore. But I won't forgive you for insulting your mother like that. I won't come to the wedding and go home. That's what you want, right? I'm cutting ties with you, by the way. Don't show yourself to me ever again. Hey, Vivian, what are you thinking kicking Dad out like that? He tried to look calm, but he was clearly furious. I mean, I don't blame him for being mad. What do you mean Dad stole Mom from our previous dad? Are you really that dumb to believe such a thing? You're going to say that as well? Open your eyes! We were being fooled by that fraud all these years. You're the one who needs to open their eyes. Dad has supported us all these years, even after Mom died 15 years ago. He never even remarried. He did all that for us, even though we weren't his real children. But this random dude comes out of nowhere spreading lies? And you just believe what he says and call Dad a fraud? How ungrateful are you? He's not lying. He knew things from when we were young. He's our real dad. Of course I'm going to believe him. I for one am going to believe our dad who raised us for 15 years and not some random dude that came out of nowhere. 
he probably only raised us because he had some sort of agenda of his own. Like, maybe he wanted us to look after him when he's old. That's the only reason he didn't leave us. He even looked at me sometimes with perverted eyes. It must have something to do with that as well. You really are trash, huh? Fine, I get it now. I'll take care of Dad when he gets old. You go with this random guy of yours. I'll go with Dad to the station. Hold on, I think I'm going to go home as well. I don't want to have to sit with some stranger you invited. I have a wife and child, so I don't want to be involved in this shady business. What? You're going home? Why would I go to the wedding of a piece of trash like you? Hold on! I asked your kids to be the ones to hand me the ring and the flowers! I don't know. It's not my problem. You're not my sister anymore. Huh? Why? Fine. I don't care anymore as well. I won't let you meet our dad anymore, even if you beg me. Hey! Answer the phone! Help me! Come back to the wedding! What is it? I'm already home. You're supposed to be at your wedding reception, right? Do you have the time to be contacting me like this? There are bigger problems right now. I need help! This is an absolute mess. Did something happen? Dad drank some alcohol and is now having a rampage. He was fine during the wedding ceremony, but he suddenly started going on a rampage and breaking things once he got drunk at the reception. He's breaking chairs and tables. Some of the staff tried to stop him, but no one could get near him. He's even injured several people. Not only that, but Dad brought with him this random woman saying she was my grandmother. I don't know whether she's mentally ill or something, but she pooed her pants in the middle of the room. This is a mess. I see. That does sound like a mess. Why are you saying that as if you have nothing to do with it? It's really a mess over here. All of my friends and colleagues left already. My fiancé and his parents are asking me what's going on, but I don't know what's going on either. What do you mean, as if I had nothing to do with it? You cut ties with me, right? And so now I'm a stranger who has nothing to do with it. What? You told me that yourself, right? That I'm not your father? Yeah, I did say that, but shouldn't you still help me at times like this? Well, that seems awfully convenient. Do something about these relatives of yours yourself. I'm pretty sure that man isn't your dad, though. But he is your relative. What? You were too young at the time to remember. But you and James's real father died more than 20 years ago. Huh? What do you mean? James was six years old, and you were two years old at the time, I think. I heard from Alexandra that he died from a car accident. I visited his grave once before I married your mom, too. He's dead, without a doubt. What? What are you talking about? There's no way what you're saying is true. Then who are those people that are making a mess at my wedding? I had guessed as to who he might be prior, but I'm sure of it now. I think he's your real dad's brother and mother. Which means that they're your uncle and grandmother. To think that he would call himself your father after what happened. What a heartless man. Which means he's not actually my dad? What do you mean after what happened? What happened? That man tried to marry Alexandra right after your father died. He was trying to get his hands on your father's inheritance. He didn't listen to what Alexandra said and even divorced his own wife at the time. Apparently, he even bought a sports car thinking he would be able to get your dad's inheritance. It's unbelievable, right? That money was supposed to be spent on you, James, and Alexandra's future. No way. I can't believe this. He bought a sports car? Alexandra and you children were able to get away thanks to the help of the wife he divorced. But he followed you for years after that. I heard that you guys had to move two times since he kept following you guys. Alexandra says she wasn't even able to visit her late husband's grave and in the panic even lost your dad's picture. She said those were tough times. But... Well, that's it. The man who's currently making a mess at your wedding is not your father, but your uncle, who your mother cut ties with. He didn't even marry Alexandra, 
but still he calls himself your father. I guess he intends on following you instead now. Your fiancé is the head of a university hospital, right? Getting rid of him is probably going to be really difficult. Huh? What do you mean? I'm only guessing, but the two of them have a huge amount of debt. The loan he took for his sports car is still unpaid probably. And it seems he doesn't make much money either. Not only that, but his mother has Alzheimer's. Either he barely gets by, or he's already collapsed from the pressure. That's why he came to you and your husband. Because he intends on making you pay for his debt. They'll probably be even more hard to get rid of this time since he won't let go of an opportunity like this. When your husband is rich, he's careless with how he spends his money. So he's probably going to give you two a hard time. Make sure not to let your guard down around him. Huh? Hold on. This can't be true. There's no way we can take care of the two of them. He's not even my real father. But aren't you the one who believed what he said and allowed him to come to your wedding? You wouldn't even listen to a word I said, right? Whether you're going to take care of him or run away is your responsibility. That's impossible. We can't run away now. I already told him where my fiancé's parents live, and he even knows the address of our new house. What should I do? Help me, Dad. You said that I wasn't your dad, right? You said I was a fraud, and to never show myself in front of you again. Uh, um, no, that was... I mean, I'm not even related to you by blood. I'm a stranger to you, just like you said. So what if this man isn't actually your dad? He's your uncle, related to you by blood. Why not treat him like he was actually your father? No, I don't want that. Please, Dad, help me. I was fooled as well. I didn't know that that's who he was. Help me, Dad. Do something about this. Um, Vivian, I raised you as if you were my real daughter. That was what I had told myself I would do when I married Alexandra. To treat you two like I was your real dad. But I'm only human as well. There's no way I wouldn't get mad or sad when the daughter I had raised up until now suddenly denies everything that I had done for her. And not only that, but insults my wife, her own mother, that I still love. Do you really think that I'm going to help you now just because you told me to? When you haven't even apologized? Ugh, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry, Dad. I made a misunderstanding. I was wrong. So forgive me. It's not something that can just be forgiven like that. Sorry, but you're on your own. I don't want to have anything to do with those people as well. Even if I were to go straight to your wedding, I wouldn't be of much help anyways. But... If you ever have trouble shaking off those people, it's fine if you get me involved, but no matter what you do, don't involve your brother and his family. He has young children. Hold on, Dad. Don't leave me. That's up to you. Congratulations on your wedding. I'd be glad if you found happiness. After that, Vivian's uncle who was rampaging in the wedding venue was subdued by security. Both him and his mother were taken away by the police. Vivian deeply regretted making a mess of her own wedding and apologized to her fiancé and his family and said that she would delay them getting married until she sorts out her business with her uncle. That or she would pay an alimony and cancel the marriage. The groom's parents wanted to cancel the marriage, but thanks to Vivian's kind-hearted fiancé, it was decided to only postpone the marriage. I'll skip the details, but after that, Vivian's uncle was tried at court. Apparently, he was guilty on countless other crimes as well, and was sent to prison. His mother was sent to a facility for elderly people, and Vivian never saw her again. Vivian and her fiancé came to me and apologized for what Vivian had done. She said it was fine if I wanted to cut ties with her if I couldn't forgive her for what she had done. But I also felt slightly guilty for not telling her about her uncle earlier and decided to forgive her if she apologized to her mother at the grave as well. Vivian paid for the wedding all on her own and even canceled their honeymoon. But after overcoming several hardships, the two got married half a year later. She made up with her brother James as well and she hosted a dinner party with us as a way of making up for her ruined marriage ceremony. It seems they still have a lot of things to take care of. I'm glad to see that the two are happy. I'm sure Alexandra and her late husband are also watching from heaven and are glad their children found happiness. After all that, I went back to my peaceful old life of going to work and occasionally playing with my grandchildren who come to visit. My children have already grown up and I have no intention of remarrying. 
I think I'm going to save up for my retirement and also maybe get better at my hobby. Open sea fishing. Mom, I'm so sorry. I'll try harder on the next test. I promise, so please let me out. What? Why do you have your phone? You said you left it at Grandma's house. Because Mom tried to break my phone. You lied to me. You never get a hundred on your test, and you lie to me. You're such a jerk. I should have never bought you a phone. I'm not buying you anything anymore, even if your friends have them. Did you call Dad? No. And why can't you? Do you remember? Because you say so. Yes. You remember that, but why can't you study? I'm sorry. It's cold here. Please let me out. Please. No, I'm drinking today. I'm not home, so I can't. You'll be out when you're better. Study for the test so you can get a hundred. I'll also stop your phone. You'll stay stupid with your phone. Please, don't do that. Please. You won't be able to use it soon. I just called the cell company. Just wait until I get back, okay? Hello? Are you Jesse? Yes, who is this? Hi, I'm Ren. I'm sorry to text you. How do you read that, octopus? It's Ren. Sorry, I don't remember. Are you from the girls bar? I can't go because I have a girlfriend. Huh? Are you mom's boyfriend? Who are you? I ain't nobody's mama's girlfriend. Is it a prank? Sorry, I'm Regina's daughter. Did mom not tell you about me? What? No way. Regina's daughter? Yes. Please help me. Huh? I'm in the shed. My mom trapped me here. I'm cold. Can you help me? Sorry. What? Are you really Regina's daughter? Are you sure this isn't a prank? No, it's not a prank. I tried calling dad, but the Wi-Fi sucks, so it doesn't work. And he's working the night shift. Mom isn't coming home, too. Are you serious? Are you really in the shed? Yes. In this fucking cold weather? Yes. Okay, I'll be right there. Do you know where you are? Your home address? Yes. Um, please don't tell my mom about this. Please. Hello, is this Joey's number? My name is Jesse. I left you a missed call. Your daughter gave me your contact information. Yes, this is Joey. Who is this? What do you mean by my daughter giving you my number? First, let me apologize. I have been dating your wife for two months. I'm sorry. What? I didn't know she was married and she had a kid. Also, I broke your shed today. I'll pay for it. I'm sorry. What? Wait a minute. I don't know what's going on. You are having an affair with my wife? My wife is Regina, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I mean, it wasn't an affair, I thought she was single. But I found out you and your kid today. Today? Did my wife let you meet Ren? No, your daughter texted me for help. Help? Did something happen to Ren? I think Regina let Ren add my number when she was drunk in the past. She asked me for help because she was locked in the shed. Her phone is also stopped, so she used the limited Wi-Fi and texted me. The shed? Our shed is outside. You mean she's trapped there? Yes. So I rescued her and she's safe at my house now. But the shed was sealed pretty tight. There was glue in the keyhole, so I had to force it open. So I broke it. I'm sorry. I have no idea what's going on, but Ren is okay, right? Yes, she's by the heat now. She's also hungry, so I fed her. She seems relieved now. She looks different from when she was in the shed. Please tell me the address. I'll pick her up. Please tell me more about the situation when I get there. Jesse, I'm sorry. I'm running late. Can you pick me up? Hey, pick up. Hey, where are you? I'm at the bar I always go to. I see. The bar is closed and I'm waiting outside, so hurry up. It's super cold. It's freezing. I know it's cold, but I can't go. What? I don't understand. Come on. I'm running an errand. Take a cab and go home. Errand? Is it a girl? No. 
You said I'm the most important woman. I'm staying at your place today. Hurry up and get me. No, go home with a cab. I'm asking you because there are no cabs. I called them, but they are all busy. There's none passing by. Come on. I'm waiting. It's fucking cold. Please. How long have you been out there? Huh? About thirty minutes. You should be fine. Ren was out for hours, so stop complaining. Huh? Ren? Yeah, Ren. You know? No. Who's that? Oh, you don't know. She said she's your daughter. I don't have a daughter. Who said that? Are you not coming because you think I have a daughter? Terrible! How can you do that without proof? Assumption? Are you saying I'm wrong? Yes. Just come and get me. That's weird. You know what? I'm having dinner with a guy named Joey. He's also saying that Ren is his and Regina's daughter. Ren, Ren is with me now. What? You're with Joey? And Ren? At your house. Come over. Wait a minute. What do you mean? Why are you at my house? Wait. Anything you have to say? I know that you're married and are a mom. You told me you were single when we met. I'm sorry. You're for cheating. Who are you cheating on? On you. Please forgive me. I'm serious about you. I was thinking about getting a divorce. You. How can you abandon your cute child? It's insane locking her in the shed in the cold. It's more than insane. The kid is stupid. She lies to me. My husband isn't helping me at all. It was hard for me that I met you. I thought you were the perfect person for me. I see. Ren says that Daddy plays with her more. Well, okay. So, can I make one promise? What's that? I swear on everything. Can you love me for the rest of your life? Yes, only you. Of course. Okay. Well, I can't. What? That question was from your husband. Huh? He wants to get things straight. He made his decision now. He's going to get a lawyer for the divorce. He's also going to demand alimony. What? You lied to me? How can I still love you? What do you mean alimony? I won't pay it. You have to pay because you had an affair. Wow, scary. Of course I'll pay. I told him I will pay whatever amount he demands. But I'm not paying for you. You're on your own. Wait, please. At least come get me. I'm going to freeze to death. What? You said you weren't going home. It's Ren who was going to freeze to death. Why do you think you deserve to be saved? Unbelievable. Jesse, you're so kind. Huh? I like you even more. Let's talk again. Maybe we can start over. No, don't ever contact me again. I told Joey to never contact me again. Huh? Wait a minute, Jesse. Hey, Joey. I want to talk. Can I call you now? No, not ever. Joey filed for divorce the next day, leaving no time for Regina to counter. Regina tried to get Ren on her side, but she was pissed and she said she's going to live with her dad. Regina was furious that Ren betrayed her, but Ren said she never wanted to see her again because she almost died because of her. I had to pay ten thousand dollars as alimony. It's cheaper than the usual alimony, but Joey said it was okay because I saved Ren. He said that he wouldn't accept any more than that, so I did what I could, like sending expensive steaks to them. That was the least I could do. Regina's alimony was thirty thousand dollars. She was complaining, but it's fair. Even years later, Joey and I keep in touch and go to lunch. I thought I should stay away from them, but he insists, so he treats me sometimes. One day, he said to me, "Ren favors me." I laughed it off. Time flies, and Ren is almost graduating junior high soon. She's so young. I was in my twenties when I met her, but now I'm in my thirties. Since then, I've been more cautious and currently don't have a girlfriend. But that's okay. I don't want someone like her again.